All right, everyone, welcome to another bad tab video. I'm kind of on a roll with these because I've been uh, cleaning out my closets, my bookshelves, and I'm finding all these old tab books that I used to learn from. This is a big one, Nirvana's Nevermind. Now, this is the original version of it. They had since revised it, but this is the one that I started with and the one that has all the mistakes in it. And what's different about this tab book compared to the other ones that I've reviewed so far is that this one doesn't have huge chunks of mistakes. Instead, there's a whole bunch of little mistakes in it. So it's kind of like death by a thousand cuts or something. And you'll see that a lot of the mistakes are very frustrating to somebody who's just learning guitar, uh, such as tab just being really goofy, making impossible stretches happen and uh, just not matching up with the notation written above it. And that always bothers me because a lot of beginners are strictly tab readers, and so they don't even look up above the tab to see what's right or wrong notation-wise, so they're kind of stuck with the numbers. Okay, let's get to the annoyances. First of all, this is gonna seem like nitpicking, I know, but right away they have the table of contents, and the way they laid it out was alphabetically, which I thought was really weird because if you're a big fan of an album, you want to open it up and see Smells Like Teen Spirit first because that's the first song on the album. Instead, you see Breed, then you see Come As You Are, and then you have the page numbers next to it. But like I said, alphabetically seems really weird when you're used to the tracking order of the album. So here's some more nitpicking, but to me it's really important. In the beginning it says, play the intro to Smells Like Teen Spirit with slight reverb. And we all know the beginning of Smells Like Teen Spirit is as dry as it gets guitar-wise, and so I don't even know why they would have to feel like they have to write that in there. It's really weird. Okay, let's add reverb. That just doesn't seem right. All right, let's go to the verse part. Now, the clean part, Kurt Cobain plays here, but they say to play it here, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, they're the same notes. But once again, it says right here, with slight reverb. Now, if you think of the effect that's going on during that part, almost everybody universally knows that it's a chorus effect, not reverb. So first we'll do it with reverb. Doesn't quite sound right. Let's do it with chorus. Much closer. So it seems like whoever transcribed the book didn't understand guitar effects very well. Okay, let's check out In Bloom. In the beginning, this is really strange. They go out of their way to tell you that it's B-flat Dorian. So somebody who's learning Nirvana on guitar, I don't think they're gonna really care what mode this is based off of. And uh, the other songs, they really don't write this in. So I thought it was really weird that in In Bloom, they decided to just tell you B-flat Dorian. At the end of the very top line, they do this really strange three note sequence that is not really in the song. So it says. Isn't that bizarre? So I tried to just make that flow and I just can't. Such a head scratching moment. Now, after the drums kick in, we have this part where above it says B5. Below it though, they make you play a B flat. So like I said, if you're just a tab reader, you're gonna have kind of a disadvantage here. Here's what it would sound like. By the way, if you guys are wondering what this is, the page holder I use today is a fuzz pedal made by my friend Pat. And uh, it's kind of funny because he calls it the red fuzz and it kind of makes sense. Looks like a Muppet to me, a robotic Muppet. Now halfway through the verse when the guitar kicks in but it's clean sound, out of nowhere they're having us play full bar chords. And the kind of funny thing is if you ever watch Kurt Cobain play live, he does what I call the Cobain chord where he lays his ring finger flat. So yeah, a lot of the time it's the full major chord when it comes to B flat in this example. But here in the tab, they say to also play this high F note with it. So you end up with this full. And then let's keep looking through this measure here. It gets really weird. There's a mute and there's three open strings, but I don't know why they have us going all the way up to the fifth string, 10th fret to hit those, uh, to hit with the open strings. And then you have to go all the way down and hit that in time. So let me just attempt this measure once again. Ugh. What I love about the real solo is it has these crazy bends with tons of dissonance and the chorus is really um, messing with the sound in a cool way. Does that sound huge? But they have it stripped down to just one note. Here it says just to do a harmonic with a full bend at the eighth fret. 
Sounds more like hair metal to me than Nirvana. Did you guys notice I switched guitars? They look alike, but this is the Jazzmaster, that's the Jaguar. Had to use this one for the full step down songs. Now this is one of the most blatant problems of this book. Uh, the key part of the sound of this riff is this sound. So if you think of Come As You Are, you think of... The way the book has it, it just makes you play the fifth fret of the sixth string, which takes away from that cool dissonance. Instead of this, they say to go. Doesn't that just kind of cheapen a really great riff? Now during the pre-chorus, there's some weird stuff going on here too. It's another one of those weird jumps for no reason. It's kind of funny because the A chord that they play, they make it sound so happy by bouncing back and forth. Then you have to jump up like that. And they want us to hit the exact same two notes, A and C sharp, that you'd be playing if you just stayed there anyway. So that jump is completely unnecessary and it actually messes up the flow. Not to mention it makes it really hard to get back to the next chord in time. I really like this solo, it's very simple, it follows the vocal melody, and the problem with it here is that all of a sudden they're having us do bends on an open string. Now as you know, unless you have a B bender, bend behind the nut or use a trem bar, you can't bend the open string the way the book is telling you a full step like that. So the best estimation that I can do with this guitar is this. <laughs> Sounds nothing like it. Now what it looks like what happened, judging from the notation above it, they actually wanted us to bend the 11th fret up, but they just made the mistake of putting it on the open string. The song Breed starts off with such a cool riff, it's so punk, just the idea of bending a power chord I always loved. But I don't know why in the tab, after you play it four times or so, they're having us strip it down to single notes for some reason. So the beginning's great. But then it changes to It's almost like they're having us play the bass part instead all of a sudden. I'm only picking on this next part because I love the sound of it so much that the book ruins it, ruins the intensity of it. They're having you play a full bar chord across, which is incorrect. Then for that cool half step bend, they're actually having us bend a whole step and do this almost classic rock sounding ending. Now if you watch Kurt Cobain play live, he just uses one finger up here and then he comes back and he shakes the note behind it, which gives it that dark sound. In the beginning of Drain You, this is really weird. Sounds like a completely different song, doesn't it? Now, if you watch him live, you can see that he starts here and just does this X pattern. I feel so bad for beginners who are trying to do all these complex bar chords when really they could just be doing this easy shape. All right, this is the part where Kurt Cobain goes prog. So you're playing a C sharp chord. It's tuned down whole step, so it would actually be B, but whatever. They have us play it twice. And then for no reason at all, they're having us switch to this chord, which is the same notes, just played in a very difficult way. Do you guys see a pattern of what's happening in this book? Same thing, but a bunch of beginners are probably going, okay, now I gotta jump to that for some reason. All right, I'm gonna try it. Why, why even jump like that? Just stay there. In the book, they make us do a Beatles chord during a lounge act, and it's just really funny how they just happen to just throw in the sixth interval to the E major, making it sound completely wrong, completely different. So it's supposed to be more like. But no, instead we get this. I wanna bow at the end of that chord, like the Beatles. On a plane is kind of an exception. You know how in the beginning of this video I said there aren't huge chunks of problems, just little things. This entire song is gonna be wrong because it's supposed to be in drop D but they have it in standard, so it kind of ruins all the fingerings and everything gets weird. So that very beginning thing where Kurt Cobain's just kind of messing around, they have it as... If you do it the correct way though and you do drop D, 
you end up with a much different thing. You just have to go like this. You can do it with one hand, and it creates this really nice shape, this nice diminished shape. Watch how nicely the riff for the verse flows when you're in drop D. If I go back to standard, now it suddenly becomes this. And no, I did not accidentally hit the wrong chord. They actually have us playing this weird augmented sound. Right before you go to the F chord. So if you compare what I just played to the correct version, the drop D version, it's like night and day, both in how it sounds and how you play it. All right, let's go back to the correct tuning, drop D. The chorus done correctly is really cool. Done incorrectly, it forces your hand to do this really bizarre shape. Once again, that's prog rock version of Kurt Cobain right there. <laughs> hammer on stuff. This chord's weird enough, and then you have to hammer on the first finger, makes it even weirder. All right, so those are all the annoying errors that I found in this book. And like I said, they did a revised version of it later on. And I want to get my hands on that just to see if they corrected those mistakes or not. And uh, I don't know, I just thought it was really interesting how many little mistakes can end up in a professional official book like this. So let me know if you guys have tried to learn how to play from this book, the original version of the Nevermind tab book, and I'd love to hear your stories. <laughs> Leave them in the comments, okay guys? All right, we'll see you at the next video. Thank you, bye.